First, I want to uh, look at any changes that have been done to it. So it has been modified since the original. The person who modified it was me. Um, one of the things that happened is I changed out the connectors on the front. See, I think I still have the original connectors. Yeah, it had these really, really weird old connectors that you can't get anything to mate, so I so it's out for some modern uh, BNC jacks. And I have uh, also got rid of the power cord and put in a IEC type uh, power receptacle on the back. So now let's take it apart. Need to find a good screwdriver. Bunch of little screws here. Got to be a little bit careful because if the screwdriver slips, you can easily put a scratch into this screening on the front panel. I've already done that somewhere. Yeah, right there, that's my scratch. Okay, all the screws are out. It'll come right out of here now. Out. A little bit hung up. So one of the nice things about changing the uh, the cable out is there's no longer a cable going back through here now that I put that uh, power entry plug in the back. Easier to take apart. So, looking it around, looking at the inside, we can see there is a light bulb here. I don't know if you can see that while we were running it up, but it was uh, very dimly lit green there. It's got a couple power transformers. That one's a bit warm. That one's not very warm. Uh, there's two tubes. Let me see if I can actually read. I can't actually read them, but the uh, schematic's available on the web. I have actually replaced at least one of the tubes in this with a newer one trying to trying to get rid of any artifacts in it. Um, so here's the big variable capacitor. We can flip it over and look at the underside. So in here I have already replaced the the main filter capacitor right here, it had a, a dual, I forget what it was, maybe it's in here. Yeah, I think I've already, maybe it's, yeah, I think it was this one. This, this one here was a dual 20 microfarad capacitor. Kind of sat right where these two electrolytics are and then hooked up to the chassis back there. So I replaced that with two new electrolytics because it seemed like a, seemed like a good idea. Um, looking in here, you can see it does have uh, the original selenium rectifier is still there. And I've actually tested it and it's actually working right. Um, there's a bunch of coils here for the various bands. So there's a coil there, 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 there. That's a total of uh, four coils. One, two, three, four. We have five bands. So the highest band is actually this, there's a, uh, there's a wire, let me get something where I don't have to touch things. It's, there's just this wire that's kind of bent around in this kind of funky shape. That is the inductor for the very highest band. Um, so the main selector switch is here in the middle. It actually looks like it was bent at some point. Um, these other potentiometers for the uh, the RF output and the power switch. You can see a pair of white wires that go run back here and serve as the power switch. And we've got the RF uh, vernier 
and then we've got the attenuator the sort of high low uh, medium attenuator you see it's got some resistors total of four resistors stuck in there so the one tube I believe yeah I believe this uh, bigger tube over here is the one that actually serves as the amplifier for the RF this other tube I think is just for the uh, internal oscillator for that 800 Hertz oscillator that's built into it hi this is a demo of a Knight KG650 um, RF generator I have it hooked up to my Rigel uh, DS1054Z I do have a 50 ohm inline terminator here and I'm gonna put it through its paces and see what it looks like so right now it is on the lowest range which is the A range it's the uh, attenuator is tuned to low so it kind of works opposite what you would think uh, low is the highest signal and high is the lowest signal there's a fine control fine control is also the on off switch putting the fine control all the way up to the top got the modulation off modulation set to external and on band A which should go from 160 kilohertz to uh, 550 kilohertz so the first thing you can see is this uh, this waveform here it's, it's, it's kind of weird um, it's not really much of a sine wave it's kind of jacked up a bit uh, I've seen other people post results from their KG650 and it, it just it seems to do that at the lower frequencies so this control here adjusts the frequency dial and as you'll notice you know I'm turning it, it it's uh, geared inside such that the rate I'm turning this is not the rate that the pointer is moving it's got some kind of gear reduction inside that lets me get more precise which is kind of nice so right now the peak to peak voltage is uh, 400 millivolts frequency of 280 kilohertz which yeah that seems uh, yeah, about two. That seems to be about dead on for that scale. Kind of see what it's doing with the uh, waveform over there. Still pretty uh, non 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 sine wave. We're ramping it back down. Lost our trigger. and then let's go to the B scale the B scale should go from uh, 550 kilohertz up to 1800 so there at the low end yeah that's 560 that's about 560 on there this is uh, about uh, 500 millivolts peak to peak as we uh, as we increase the frequency the uh, the voltage tends to go up on it So we're about uh, 670 millivolts over there. Let's go to a spot on this scale. That's 1800. Yeah, 1800 kilohertz. Reading 1.78 megahertz. So that's it's within ballpark of what it uh, should be. Let's go to the next scale. Here we're up to scale C. Uh, this one should go from 1.9 megahertz up to 7 megahertz. See how we're still getting uh, 400 and some odd millivolts peak to peak. You can see the waveform is still pretty uh, pretty strange. Getting stranger the further you turn it up. Um, let's go to uh, yeah, so where did we top out? That should be 7 megahertz on here. It is reading, uh, well, it's all over the place. But about 6, here's the Reichel's internal frequency counter, about 6.9 megahertz. So yeah, it's, it, it seems like it's, uh, it's working pretty well. So mid-scale, that should be uh, 3.6 or so, and that is... 3.46, yeah, well there's uh, 
Yeah, 3.5. So yeah, it, it the the scale tracks the frequency reasonably well, although these you know these weird waveforms are kind of troubling. Let's try the next scale. Here's scale D. This should go from uh, 7 megahertz to 27 megahertz. Oh, let's see what down at the bottom our uh, peak to peak. We're down to 250 millivolts peak to peak, and we're reading. Uh, let's bring it on up to. 7 megahertz. You know, it seems pretty stable. That's 7.00282 and it's holding there. Um, yeah, this, this scale here is not at all accurate. So this, this says about 7.5 and it's actually closer to 70. Let's try in the middle. This scale says 13, whereas here we're at about 12. So definitely you need to, you need to use an external, uh, frequency counter of some sort rather than relying on these scales here they're not right and all the way up to the high end of 27 megahertz on the scale and we're reading uh, 25.72 megahertz on the oscilloscope let's try the highest scale It's got, the highest scale has a bit of a dead spot down here at the bottom. So going up and it'll, here let's, yeah, so that's where it starts to get stable is there at about 28 megahertz or so, which is actually pretty close to what the pointer says. Ramping it up, that should be around 40. Here, let's tune that for exactly 40. It's kind of hard to get an exact frequency style, so that's 40.003. And here, you know, this is showing about 41 on the scale. Uh, our peak to peak, we're down to about 160 millivolts, so, you know, the higher you go on the scale, the, the, the lesser the peak to peak value we're seeing on the scope. And there's, you know, there's some bit of an artifact there. And then the, uh, the voltage starts to go up. Here we're at about uh, 66 megahertz. The scale's reading about 68 or so, so it's still off by a bit. We're up to about 350 millivolts peak to peak. All the way up to the top end at 112. Here, let's bring this to 112 even. 112.021 on the rival's frequency counter is reading about 111 or so on the uh, the scale. Um, let's see what else we can do with it. We can uh, we can vary the output level with the. Uh, vernier control here, so that works it's to work pretty well. It's also got this uh, coarse attenuator. If we go to medium, whoops, I didn't need to do that. I want this one. Now we're down to 35 millivolts, uh, 30, 38 millivolts peak to peak. Then if we go down to low, then we're at about 15. So it's on the, the highest band, and the attenuator ranges are 15 millivolts, 38 millivolts, and 530 millivolts. Um, yeah, so it seems to work reasonably well. Let's try some uh, modulation. Here, let me put it down to a reasonable band that someone might use AM on, so... Let's Still got that jacked up waveform, so there's 650 kilohertz. Let's go a little bit higher, let's go to about 900... 900 kilohertz, it hasn't... 
internal tone generator will try that out. And if we bring this way back, and then let's try internal modulation. Set our trigger up here. Bring in the modulation. Well, that isn't really doing a whole heck of a lot, is it? Modulation level doesn't seem to have much effect. Knob's a little bit loose. Let's try some different frequencies. There's our uh, intensity. Yeah, I'm not really uh, that impressed with its ability to do AM modulation. About one of the other bands. Yeah, this modulation gain doesn't do it. Maybe that's only for the uh, external jack. That would be my guess. Try applying some external modulation. Okay, over here I've set up my function generator to uh, set it to sine wave. Aim for about 800 uh, kilohertz. And let's see, I've now switched this over to internal modul external modulation. And now, yeah, now we'll find the, uh, the gain control works as expected. Still kind of weird due to that wonky waveform that it's producing. But we can see that it is at least uh, trying to modulate the signal. Yeah, see, we can change our, our modulation frequency here. Uh, no, this is, I've got not 800 kilohertz, 800 hertz. Got this set to. So, yeah, the, the modulation control. Kind of, kind of working now. So I think it does everything it's supposed to do, it's just it's really kind of ugly with that bizarre waveform it puts out. I wonder if we went up to the highest band. If it modulates any better. Yeah, so now we look at the modulation. So here I've turned it up to the highest band and we'll see what the modulation control does. It works works a bit better. Yeah. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.